everybody, it's Little from Moon's Crafts. <clears throat> I already did a dry run of this video, and, oh boy, y'all wouldn't have wanted to sit through that. My arm was in the way about 50% of the time, so I'm going to put the camera on the tripod here in a minute and um, try to do it in front of me if I can. Uh, this is just a sample. Uh, I said I had wanted to do smaller dragon pendants. So this is a little sample of one we're going to do one similar to. <clears throat> so I just thought I would uh, start out by showing you the supplies. Start out with, uh, you can use one of those glass beads, one of those glass stones. Um, uh, a cabochon, a marble, uh, whatever you're wanting to make your little dragon around. I've got a little matching check glass bead. You can use any kind of bead or, like this one, no bead. I've got these little hotfix glass rhinestones. And uh, I love these because not only do they hold up in the oven since they're glass, but the hotfix adhesive, of course, is activated in the oven. So, as you can see, it's got a cute little rhinestone eye. And again, this is totally uh, optional. He can have just an indention for an eye. Totally not necessary for him to have a glass eye. I've got my clay blade. Uh, your sculpting tool of choice. I've got this double-ended uh, ball tool. Uh, my acrylic roller. Um, this little set of... I have no idea what kind of polymer clay it is. <laughs> it came from a... It came from... Mm -hmm. It came off of um, eBay. It was a little order from China. And of course when I got it, it had... <laughs> No English instructions or wording of any kind, so I don't know what the brand is. It's a little sticky. It's still wrapped in the plastic right now, but they're a little sticky um, and super soft, but I want to use them up, and so these are the perfect. This one was actually made using exactly one of these little bars, and this is about on regular... On regular clay, if I had to guess, it's about a half of a bar equivalent. So, I'm going to take each one of them and put just a little bit of transparent with it, just to stretch it out just a little bit. So, um, I've got two stones laid out here. I'm not going to do the tutorial for both of them, even though I'm going to refer back and forth because um, I want to show one like the larger pendants where the body comes up from the back and then I'm going to do this one basically <laughs> the other thing that you'll need of course is whatever you're going to bake on and look I've got just my piece of glass this time so I won't be reflecting everywhere and then my goofy texture stamp and that's just for the back so that the back will have something interesting and not just be, of course you can just have it be smooth. Alright, I'm going to put my camera on the tripod after I change the battery and I'll be right back. Please camera, don't fall. If it crashes, I apologize. I also got out my little acrylic block, just something to you can use your acrylic roller for the same thing. I've already mixed the transparent in with this lump of peach colored clay. I'm going to start by cutting it in half. But I'm going to do it over here where I can look down from the top of it. Alright, so we've got the piece, the half piece for our body. And then the other half piece, I'm going to save for the back and for the wing. Alright, set that off to the side. I'm going to take and pinch the rounded end. And I'm going to pinch it one way and then I'm going to turn it and pinch it the other. A little pyramid kind of shape. 
then I'm going to start reducing just the least little bit the opposite end. Okay. Stay out of the way. <laughs> now I'm going to start to roll it out. Snake it out, so to speak. I want it to become a long, tapering. And as I'm doing it, I want to reduce this end a little bit as well. Okay, let's see. I did this the first time. Let's see if this is helpful. I'm not sure. It's about not quite four inches almost. We'll roll it out just a little bit more. You just want enough to go around whatever you're going to wrap. Excuse my little center dot. That's just so I stay in frame. Alright. Now, your little head here, decide which side you want up. You can reshape it a little bit. Now I'm going to basically stick him down. I would be working on my glass so he would stick nicely. But I'm going to hold on to his head and I'm going to do little pinches down the back. Okay, and then I'm just going to smooth that out. And that that lengthens him out just a little bit more. Let's see what we've got now. Yeah, right about five inches. That's a good size to go around. Let's see. To go around the cabochon, you could go around all the way or you could do like we're going to do and just go around part way and have the bead that we're going to inset be in the tail. Okay. Alright. But first, I'm going to pause and then we're going to add some detail. Okay taking the larger end of my ball tool whatever your sculpting tool is I'm going to start by making grooves sweeping back towards the tail they don't have to be even, you can make them even, you can make them uneven, you can make them rough, you can work at making them a little more detailed, it's completely up to you. This is where the differences will come in, in the, from dragon to dragon. And I'm not going all the way down, just down to where the tail starts to really taper out thin. Hopefully you can see that. Now we're going to flip it over. And do the same thing on the other side. Trying not to press down too terribly much. You'll distort some of the detail on the other side. But I'm just going to follow it down as far as I did the first time. Okay, let's see. Now at this point, you can go in and accentuate the little dips in his frill if you want. They'll have a little bit on their own just from the nature of how we made them. So I'm only going to go a little way. And then I'm going to smooth them down just a little bit get some of that little frayed look off of it. Okay, then we come around to his face. Again, you can draw his face out just a little bit sharper. 
because all of the work that you do on it will continue to push it back push it back in I'm just gonna flatten his nose just a tiny bit I'm gonna start on his nose I'm gonna take just give myself just a little division and then I'm gonna give him a nostril on one side and draw down and a nostril on the other side and draw down just give him little elongated little nostrils okay and then above those, just move my thumb out of the way, do a little arch, make him look like he's got little flared nostrils. And of course, you can do whatever detail your little dragon heart desires. Now, I said this on the first video. Fix it. What's the smell? It's this crooked. All right. One of the things I learned in school about eyes. Anytime you're doing eyes, if you're right-handed, start with the left eye. If you're left-handed, start with the right eye your brain will have an easier time All right, I'm right handed so I started with the left eye your brain will have an easier time matching on your natural side if that makes any sense so I just made a little hole Rocked it forward a little bit to give him a little bit of a tear duct. Did the same thing on the other side. Now, he doesn't have to be perfect, but if you look from above, you can see they're pretty much directly across from each other. Alright, so here's where my little rhinestones are going to come in. And once again, you can leave him just like this. He does not have to have rhinestone eyes. The hardest part here is to get the stone to lay flat. So if one of your ends goes too far in first, you're going to have to take it back out. So the top end went in first. So I'm going to start by pushing on the bottom, the bottom end, if it makes any sense. And then once I get it, I'm going to push in on the middle. There we go. Now, since I squished, since I squished, there we go. Okay, now again, right here you have lots of uh, decorating options. What I usually do is I'll go down between his eyes just a little bit, just to kind of give them a little bit more separation. They tend to get pushed together. Then I'm just going to do some little... detailing around his cheek okay now he's really starting to come alive a little bit and you want to turn him around and around and make sure that he's pretty from every side now you can add him horns there's all kinds of stuff you can do from here but uh we're going to leave him simple. So I said. And then immediately changed my mind. So I'm just going to roll him out some little horns. Give him, give him a bit of a twist. 
going to have that kind of unicorn twist kind of look. Now what I suggest anytime you're doing something you're going to turn into jewelry I'm going to take his horns and I'm going to turn them back like that into the body let them stand up it's fine you just don't want that tip sticking out it'll get it'll get broke off it'll catch on something right away and get broke off all right one more I said I wasn't gonna let this video get as long but you watch Okay, twisted that one in the opposite direction. Not that, that that's that important. Again, stick it down. Alright, there we go. Our little dragon. Okay. Now, now on the bigger pieces, if you go back and look, they have feet and stuff like that. But this one's not going to. And I talked about on the first video, right now, we're not really trying to... Um, stick him to the stone uh, he will stick but he won't be the main support when we put the back on that's what will sandwich the whole thing together so, take up your little head now you have the option here sorry about that of you can cock his head into the stone like that if you want Or you can lay it flat like I had it before. And I think on this one, I'm going to leave it a little cocked like that. Alright. Now. This is something else I didn't do on the other one, but I'm going to do it on this one. I'm going to take just a little bit. Roll it out. Pause. Alright, we'll roll this out just a little bit further. What I'm going to do is make a cushion. Just make just a little cushion for the stone to sit on. If I can keep the clay from sticking to itself. Let me do it this way. Start by... may be complete folly. Get up. It's either going to stick to the clay or to me. Alright. Now. Oh, for goody aunt's sake, stop it. Now. <sighs> and don't you know the other thing I forgot to mention I'm going to take a little piece of wire just a little piece of craft wire and I save my cutoffs when they're you know, half an inch or longer usually and just for these kinds of things
do it right then. I'm thinking my piece of clay is making it harder, not easier. It's really not that. It's having the camera in front of me that makes it so hard. There we go. Now let me look, let me pick that up so I can look at it. I promise I'll get happy with it in a minute. Alright. Now, you can just go back and add a little bit. What I really need to do is stop and let this rest because I've got it so soft. Soft and sticky. And glaring y'all to no end and I'm so sorry. do that I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna let this rest and come back and we'll put his wing on okay don't touch the camera now we've let him set I went fed and watered the dogs and <laughs> took care of morning business I'm gonna take what we've got left, our other half, minus the horns and <laughs> other bits I pinched off. And I'm going to very awkwardly <laughs> roll this out a little bit. Trying really hard not to bump the camera. little thinner on this edge. I need to try to have enough left to make the backing. Okay, just an elongated uh, elliptical shape. Now, being aware of which direction your dragon is facing, so we want the we want the curve of his wing to be on the outside. And then he'll have the inside curve of his wing. So, can you see? That? Will be his wing. Here will be where his wing is attached to his body. So that can just be straight. And then you'll have the trailing edge. Okay. And we don't need it near that. Alright. Like that. If that's not quite enough, I can add a little more transparent to it to make the backing. But we'll set that aside. Again, taking the larger end of the ball tool. I'm going to make a little half mm, quarter circle right here and then follow back along to make this is his arm of his wing and then just a little groove 
right down the inside edge of the wing for his first finger another finger and another finger move little dragon There we go. Alright, then, again, there's a lot of things you can do. With my smaller end, you could just do lines down. You could do arched bars to fill it in, almost like a spider web. And that's what I'm going to do. like that. Now, normally I would have this stuck down to my glass, which helps me quite a bit in shaping the wing. I just put a couple of little walled out spots, like he's got some damage to his wing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to shape. I'm going to start with his arm. Okay. And then you can do so many things you can have the wing fold down in which case you'll want to detail the back just a little bit and really just this uh, front edge will show and you may have want to go back and re-impress some of your detail on the front. Alright. And we'll shape it some more when we get it on him. But you can see there how you can see just a little bit of the detail when it turns over. Alright. I want to make sure that my little curve of his frill is kind of symmetrical okay and then you got two things to decide on a how you're gonna hang him he can hang this way of course this way you could even have him hang this way um, this way is probably the hardest because you'll have to figure out how to uh, embed your hanger behind your bead, but it can be done. I think I'm going to have him hang this way, which is probably the easiest to show you. So what we're going to start with is deciding, do you want his wing to be the away from you wing, or do you want the wing to be the towards you wing? Just a minute, Samson. And right now, of course, the wing looks huge, but it's going to be compacted down by the shaping. I'm going to cut just a tiny bit of a curve into that edge. Possibly not the direction I want it. We'll see. This glass is so hard to pick up compared to my little tiles. Just a little shape. Alright, and we don't want the wing to be right on top unless you want um, your bail to be hidden. I will probably have some beads coming off the top so I don't want the wing to be directly on top. Stay with me, camera. 
You want to be sticky clay until I want you to stick. Until I don't have enough hands, can't hold my tongue right, and... <laughs> I'm trying to kind of tuck that wing edge behind the edge of the stone. That doesn't always happen where you need to do that, but his frill was kind of short. Alright. First thing I'm going to do is start to pull the wing tip towards me and pinch. Well, if I can get it to fold a little bit. Nope, can't get it to do what I want it to do at all. Alright, there we go. Now you want to start to draw your tip down a little bit so it, it won't have near as much of a tendency to hang on things. Now let's pick him up. You can do a lot. You can do a lot of different things like stay in frame. You can start to coax this wing back and have it touch the body over here or you could do the same thing and have it touch the body over here to give some additional strength if you're worried about the wing being uh, an issue so I'm just gonna have it earth was that I have no clue like a piece of that clipped off wire okay Okay, so there we go. We've got our little wing. And like I said, there's so many different ways you can do the wing. So right now we are ready to stick him in the oven. You want to do a once over and make sure all of your little details are symmetrical and look the way that you want. But you don't have any little issues that you want to correct before you stick it in the oven. Okay. I've gone ahead and prepared our little green guy just so that I can show you what I mean about you can have him coming up the back in which case you won't need a backing to the stone but you will need two wings instead. As soon as I decide where I want him. <laughs> because you've got to decide still how you want his head to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down like that. And it's a bit of a difficult angle, but... I want to leave it hollow there. Bring his little mouth squished more than I want it to nose. Down like that just to kind of kiss the top of the stone and what I'll do before I stick that in the oven is I'll put just a drop of liquid Sculpey there to hold that in place and then again the same thing with your tail um, to wrap the little stone the little bead <laughs> go like that and then you're making two wings that again you can attach to the back like that so all right that'll finish baking the oven will finish baking here in a minute and I'll come back and show you how to put the back on like I said this one won't need a back because he will be his own back <laughs> that makes sense
Okay, now, out of the oven, I've let it cool down, um, popped it off the glass with my palette knife. And here we've got a little dragon ready to put the back on. Get my tile out of the way. I've got our extra clay. A, this is my largest size jump ring. And it is an eight millimeter <coughs> pardon me. An eight millimeter jump ring. And the reason I'm using the largest one that I have is because half of the jump ring will be embedded in the in the backing. So you'll only have half of your jump ring to work with. So again I like to have the end the connecting end separated just a little bit. I hope y'all can see that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my acrylic block and I'm gonna smash this into a disc. Trying to keep in mind the size of the back of our dragon. That's not quite big enough, but I'm going to stop right there because now I'm going to take my texture sheet and finish it off. Like that. Lightly peel that off and flip it over and do a little test fit. See if it's big enough. If it's big enough to cover the back of the piece. Now, in a perfect world, which, yes, I realize, none of us are living in, I would want a little something right here to give this tail some strength. But, I didn't save any clay. So let's do this. I'm going to roll that back into a ball. Pinch me off a very little bit. Roll that back into a ball. I'm going to take this little bit here also into a ball. Good deal, we can use a little bit less of that. Sorry, of course I already put all my stuff up. <laughs> my clay blade and stuff is already put up. Alright, so I'm gonna give this bit right here a little bit of extra strength. But trying not to get any clay over the back of the bead. Now if you're using a bead that's not transparent that won't matter. And just because I'm a bit anal <laughs> Clutzy. I'm going to try to give it that same little shape. Just so it kind of looks like it belongs there. And it will bake up truer to the color of the rest of the piece. Alright, one more time. Roll. Lovely little bit of green. Get off. Mm-hmm. And that's because why? Because I didn't clean my hands in between. We're going to tell ourselves since it's the, it's the back, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, one more time.
much better. Now see, we don't have that huge gap that we had before. Okay. I can actually move this over just a bit. The other thing you have to decide is how much reveal you want to show right there. You can uh, make your circle a little smaller and have none if that's what you want. Just coax your little edge down to seal all the way around. We're going to flip it over again and decide where. So that's going to show just a little bit behind the wing there. Right. I'm peel that edge up because I can. <laughs> I'm gonna put just a drop. Whoa, of liquid sculpey in there. Not necessary, but helpful. Give a lot more strength to that area that the jump ring is in. Now, the reason that I like those ends separated is because it kind of helps to give a little bit of an anchor. I'm not going there too far. Alright. Again, I like to make sure that I'm in alignment with what I want the bottom to be. So there we go. Now I'm going to take my larger end of my ball tool and I'm going to close that gap giving it a little bit of pressure to make sure that little edge is sealed now if that bothers you that little unevenness just smooth it out a little bit so the other thing you want to make sure is that your jump ring is tilted back just enough to get another jump ring in there like that so as you can see from the front we can't even see that little jump ring so that's going to go back in the oven this time for 20 minutes the first time uh, I do it for 30 minutes sorry the camera cut out on me at that uh, crucial moment but since it was going in the oven anyway there we go I'm gonna stick this one in the oven and then I'm gonna come back and um, I'm gonna show them all to you real quick while that's baking occasionally I'll have a little extra of the color that I mixed for one of those little dragons. What I'll do is I'll just take it and mash it between my texture sheet and then run a hole through it and make a little bead, a little focal bead. Maybe the white one might show a little bit better. Or of course you could make just a round bead or a A cylindrical bead, an egg-shaped bead of just a matching bead. Something that you can hang on the chain, off the chain. To go with. So that you don't wind up having 75 little pieces of scrap clay that you don't know what to do with. I will just make a bead, even if it's one I don't use. I'll stick it in my my uh, bead tub, and when I don't know what I need and can't find what I need, occasionally I'll pull one out and go, oh, "Looks like I made that just for this occasion." So there's what to do with your little extra scrap clay. Now, like when I did the black one, if I have black scrap clay, I just throw it back in with my black scrap clay. But these little squares of clay that I was using. I won't be able to match that clay 
so th there's really no point in keeping it so I'll just make beads out of them one of them I literally only had the biggest piece left <laughs> I don't know what I could do with that so alright I'll be back when these are baked <laughs> okay here's the first one this was the sample piece alright unfortunately here's the one that just came out of the oven and from time to time <laughs> I do stupid stuff without really thinking about it what happened was because I had this kicked out at an angle a little bit this jump ring when I went to bake it I went to bake it this way so that I wouldn't flatten down <laughs> the jump ring and when I did, I didn't think about that my wing stuck down through my polyfill and was touching the bottom of my Pyrex baking dish. So we got a little bit of scorching on the wing right there. But I can faux finish, do something to, uh, to cover that up. It didn't burn enough to compromise the, the clay, so. There is the one that we were working on. Cute, cute kitty turned out so cute. Alright, so there's two. One, two. One, two. Now, where's the green one that we, alright. Here's the green one. I put a little ink of gold in the yellow green on it. And again, I won't be able to glaze the uh, center stone on these because I'm out of glaze. <laughs> I'm going to go to town. Going to town is like, you know, <laughs> it's about 15 miles. It was a 30 mile round trip to go get one thing probably order it and get it faster all right so next let's see how did, where did I start as I look around underneath okay I did this one after I did the dark blue one I did this one which may be my favorite one he just has the cutest little face okay and then I did this one. A little hard to see. And again, this stone will be glazed. And of course, you could do a white wash, you know, and wipe it off. A white antiquing. You could do antiquing of any color. Next, I did this one. Which I that stone is so pretty. It's got some uh, rainbow um, mylar backed foil in that transparent and black stone. Oh. And so I put a couple of different colors of Pearl X powders on him and a little bit of the Inca gold in the. What's it called? graphite okay so that one's number six and then I did these other two oh, this one goes this way sorry I uh, I thought this looked like a face with hair flying out behind so that's why I hung that one that way All right, and then there was this one which I'm not wild about the color, but I absolutely love it for some reason. Besides the fact I love this, this center stone will look a lot like that black one once it's glazed. And again with this cute little face. So that one hangs this way. And then I did this one, which I love this one. Really pretty. Of course, green, brown, my 
Some of my favorite colors. Alright, let's get a look at his little face. Cute. He's got a little frill and a little horn. Cute, cute, cute. And his little wing turns down like the one we just did. Alright, and that one hangs this way. And then I did this one, which I also love. Ooh, the camera does not like red, does it? Very odd. Camera does not like red. Again, another one that the stone is not yet glazed. His little face. And he has just a one little bit back horn on his head. And then he's got little rolled ram's horns on the side. And this one again will hang like this. Okay, and then the last two were this one. Sorry, it goes this way. And these I did on the glass stones just to give you an idea. And instead of putting a solid back on there, I put a ring back just to hold the stone in, but so we could still see through it. And of course that gives you all kinds of options of things you could do um, to the back. You could Mod Podge an image, you could, uh, although fingernail polish isn't really compatible with polymer clay, you could do the fingernail polish um, technique on the back of the stone without compromising your clay. And again, this one has that hematite rub on it, along with a bit of the um, steel blue that you might can just see a little bit of. Okay, and then last but not least was the white glitter one. And because this stone had a very odd shape, um, it tapered in, the bottom of it tapered in a lot. I couldn't get the dragon itself to hug the stone enough, even putting the little ring so I had to give him some little prongs, some little prong settings. Cute. His little face. So there you go. Just a little example of what you can do with little dragon pendants. There's a dozen of them. And um, I could go on and on with these. But I think I'll stop there. I may come back to it just because I have so many of these little squares. But I will more than likely come back with something else about this size um, to do. And so here also is the last of the, uh -huh, the little flat beads that I made. And I just will put a little bit of that same... This is the one that goes with this one. So I'll put some of that same Inca gold in the yellow green. like that to bring out the detail and then that will go with this one here all right so that is that i will string these up and i'll come back and do a video um showing them all put together because like i've said before not everybody cares for uh tutorials and not everybody cares for the finished videos, so got to try to get it all in there for everybody, right? All right. Polymer clay dragon pendants. There we go. I hope everybody enjoyed. I hope everybody had a good weekend, and I shall holler at y'all later.
Bye now.